Hi guys, welcome back to another episode with the Omega Enthusiast. This is actually a part 2 of my personal 30T2 Omega watch collection. I made part 1 when I first started making YouTube video. And these were the 9 examples from that video. In this video, I will be introducing 20 of my personal Omega 30T2 watches dating back to around 1939 to late 1940s. 30T2 is the movement caliber number which these following watches takes. Before we get started, let me do a recap of the following 9 pieces. First, since I am sure many of you have not yet watched it, part 1. First in the slot is my one and only CK2122 case model. This is an example of one of the earliest Omega watch which takes these 30mm caliber movement. Before there was 30T2, Omega first introduced it, the caliber 30 and 30T1. But since 30T2 was produced it several times more than the other two calibers, most collector will refer any of the 30mm caliber family as 30T2. Caliber 30, which is what is inside this watch, is the base caliber of 30T1 and 30T2. CK2122 is a very simple watch with 35mm diameter and has wire type lugs, which means the lugs do not take a removable spring bar. The crown on this example is actually a replacement crown since it is signed, but it is the right type of crown designed for this case model. Up next in this slot is also my one and only CK2317 case model. This example takes a 30T2 caliber. Please note that caliber 30T2 is a manual wind type movement, which is why I like them very much as I do prefer manual wind movement over automatic. Why? I just feel more connected to my watch whenever I hand wind them first thing in the morning prior to putting it on my wrist. This case model is relatively thin and measures 35mm in diameter. To me, it is very important that this watch has to come with its original mushroom type crown. This third piece is one of my earliest Omega 30T2 watch. Unfortunately, I am still unable to locate the CK case model number for this piece. So if anyone can recognize it, please leave your answer in the comment section below. Much appreciated. Also a 35mm in diameter watch, what I like the most about this piece is the very rare factory original black sector dial. The case of this watch is very lightweighted. When you pop open the case back, it is similar to a shell where the movement securely sits into the case, case back instead of the body of the case. Watch number 4 is probably my favorite Omega 30T2 watch. This is a case model CK2400, which is also referred to as the Omega Souverain, a Swedish World War II era wristwatch. I made a video on this specific case model. If you browse through my channel, you'll be able to locate it and learn more about it. This specific dial on this watch, I would say is the best example that I've seen. This dial is not a rare variation for this case model, but they are usually poorly aged for some reason. CK2400 is also a 35mm in diameter case model. Watch number 5 is another Omega Souverain 30T2 watch. This dial variation is probably most popular for this case model. This dial allows you to read the time from distance away. Do note that the original crown on most 30T2 case model will be unsigned. When the dial has luminous indexes on a CK2400 case model, then the hands will be syringe luminous type. There are also a few variations for the syringe type hands. The current one on this watch is referred to as the broad or fat syringe hands. Watch number 6 is an OT2000 
2364 case model, which is the chronometer 30T2 watch. The reason it is OT instead of CK is because OT stands for a solid gold case, whereas CK is referring to solid stainless steel. This version also exists in solid stainless steel under the case models number CK2364. But in general, a collector will just use CK regardless of the case material. Since this is a chronometer 30T2, the caliber is actually known as 30T2 RG. A few movement parts on a 30T2 RG will appear differently to a regular 30T2. Since the case is made of solid gold, you, you'll also see the hall marking on the lug. The case size for this model is 33mm in diameter. And now we have watch number 7, is, which is a CK2383 case model, which is almost identical to a CK2400 except that the case back is plain. It is very difficult to tell the two apart without turning them over to look at the case back. The dial on a CK2383 and CK2400 are interchangeable as well. According to my research, CK2400 was made specifically for Sweden and CK2383 was made for internationally. What I like about this piece is the unique bullseye dial with raised Arabic numeral L indexes. Watch number 8 is a CK2384 case model, which is the center second version of a CK2383. For those of you who do not know what does center second and sub second mean, basically center seconds refers to as the second hand is located at the center of the watch, just above the minute and hour hands, and sub second means the little second hand is located just above the 6 o'clock. Part of grading the value of the watch is by examining the luminous on the hands. If they are missing or have been relumed, there can be a big value difference on these watches. Watch number 9 is also a CK2384 case model. This is the non-luminous version of the previous piece and this dial variation is much more difficult to locate compared to the previous example as well. Let's just say I am very fortunate to own this timepiece. Even though this dial may not be of interest to most people, a 30T2 collector such as myself will see this piece as a holy grail. In case you guys are confused, when a watchmaker orders his 30T2 parts from a supplied house, he will have to indicate whether the parts are for the center second or sub second movement, but most parts are interchangeable. All right, it's time to go through the remaining 11 pieces. Now you can see that I am really a big fan of these older 1940s Omega, especially those that carry the 30mm caliber. They are not the best movement that Omega ever made since most of the Omega movements are top quality stuff, but I just like how all of these watches that carry the 30T2 movements appear. They are just naturally attractive to me and most of the case sizes are 30mm, which will sit on my wrist perfectly. Did you know that 30T2 stopped in production in the late 1940s? However, that's because Omega changed it, the number system and upgraded the original 30T2. Basically, all of the caliber 260 series and 280 series dating from the late 1940s to mid 1960s are all caliber based off the original 30mm caliber. The 260 series represent the sub second version, and the 280 series represent the center second version. This allows part ordering a lot easier as well. Anyhow, let me begin introducing these 11 spectacular pieces. Watch number 10 is another CK2400 Souverain case model. Do not mistake in this watch with watch number 5 from the previous 9. This one, I would say, initially had a grey tone dial, which has been nicely patina over the years. When both pieces are put against each other side by side, you'll be able to differentiate that this dial has a rail track indicating the minute and has regular luminous syringe hands instead of the broad version. All of these 
CK2400 model will take 18 mm size lugs. I think the current teal tone strap matches this piece very well. Up next is watch number 11, which is another of my one and only CK2169 case model. This is probably one of the hardest to find version of these similar case model. CK2169 is a sub-second watch and can be easily mistaken for a CK2383 or CK2400. However, if you thoroughly examine this case model, you'll notice that the lugs are much smaller compared to the other two models. And if you turn the watch around, the case back has a much smaller bevel as well. The, the other thing that you'll need to know is that the case tube and crown are quite special. The case tube on this watch is about twice the width of the other two case model. That's because the case tube on a CK2169 takes a special gasket and the crown is, is actually hollow. You can learn more about these three case model on one of my past video. Watch number 12 is a CK2383 case model, and what I like about this piece is the rare white tone with luminous numeral L indexes. The syringe hands and sub second hands are made of blue steel, which makes this watch stand out even more. A lot of strap will work very well on this watch, but I think the current one matches the watch the best. The type of crystal that these watches takes are low dome acrylic without the metal tension ring. The crown and case back do take a gasket. The original case back gasket for these watches are made of soft metal material, but I usually would recommend to remove the old gasket and replace with fresh new one. Watch number 13 is another CK2400 case model. This is another dial variation for, the, for this case model. It is a unique Roman numeral luminous bullseye dial. This piece gets a lot of wrist time, probably the most out of my 20 pieces. It was relatively difficult to match a nice strap to this watch for some reason. However, at the end, I was able to locate this vintage metal bracelet, which is a perfect match to this watch. What do you think? It is absolutely normal for the hour and minute hands to be in steel tone while the sub second or center second hand to be in blue steel. On to watch number 14 and probably the 6CK2400 case model from the lot. To be honest, I am not 100% sure whether this dial was initially this way or it has been uniquely patina over time. Also, when a dial is factory original, the font of the watch may not be always perfectly aligned and printed. Check this out when I set the hands to 12 o'clock on this watch. You can see that the center logo and font are printed leaning more toward the left. This is not the first time that I come across a misprint like this and definitely not the last time either. Overall, this is still a spectacular piece regardless and nothing matches the watch nicer than a vintage style handmade strap. You're wearing an old watch so it makes sense for the strap to appear old as well. Watch number 15 is a CK2179 case model. This is the center second version of the CK2169 case model which was watch number 11. Both case model have the same type of case tube and takes the same type of crown. However, when comparing them from the side, you'll be able to tell that CK2179 is a slight bit thicker since it has the extra bridge to hold down the center second pinion on the movement. This will make the movement thicker and will, and will require the case to be made thicker as well. This case model has two variation. One made for the civilian and one was military issue. The military issue version will have engraving on the case back such as US Army or 
RAAF, which stands for Royal Australian Air Force. Do not get this piece mixed up with watch number 8. The dial numeral setting on a CK2179 is not the same as that on a CK2384. If I am correct, CK2179 only exists with the luminous numeral dial. Just as a, just as a reminder, all of these case model takes a 30T2 caliber. Watch number 16. You guys probably can assume this has to be another CK2400 model. And you're right, this is another CK2400. I honestly do not know how many dials variation does this model have. All that I can say is there are a lot. This current piece has Roman numeral luminous hour indexes instead of the more common Arabic numeral version. The crown on this piece is slightly worn down, which is why it appears a bit smaller. Anyhow, which numeral version would you prefer on a CK2400? Feel free to leave your comment below. Next in line is my last CK2400 case model. This is one sharp looking timepiece. Do not get this one mixed up with watch number 10. If you compare the dials side by side, you'll notice that the minute track are not the same. This CK2400 has broader minute track. One thing to keep in mind is, is that most of these watches will not say Swiss made on the dial. It is common for a 1940s vintage watch to not have the Swiss made printed on the dial. Watch number 18 is another dial variation of a CK2383 case model. CK2400 also uses this dial variation. This dial exists with and without the word Swiss made. I once owned three watches with the same dial. However, the hands are of different types of syringe variation. One thing that I must mention is the luminous tone on the dial and the luminous tone on the hands. It is common for the luminous tone on the dial our indexes to be different from the luminous tone on the hands. That's because the dial and hands were made in different department or a different process. Each station or department will have their own mix of luminous paste, which is probably the main reason why over the years they have aged differently. Watch number 19 is my second OT2364 case model. Remember, OT stands for solid gold and CK stands for solid stainless steel. Even though this piece looks almost identical to my other OT2364, I bought this one for its special dial. If you compare the two side by side, this is the only dial that I've seen on this case model which says officially certified. Not to forget that this case is made of solid 18K gold. Therefore, the stain on the bezel that you see is not rust. It can be removed with a jeweler polishing cloth. Last but not least is watch number 20. Here's a test for everyone. I think by now you guys should be able to guess which case model this is after I turn the watch around once. Remember, if the case back has a bigger bevel, you can cross out CK2169. Since the case back is also plain without any engraving, then you can cross out CK2400. This is a sub-second watch, so you can cross out CK2384, which only leaves you with the case model CK2383. That's the end of this video and there you have it, it's my personal collection of 30T2 Omega watches. Let me know which of the following 20 pieces is your favorite by leaving your comment in the comment section below. A video like this takes around 40 hours or more for me to produce. If you guys enjoy it, please support this channel by hitting on that thumbs up like button. If you would like to watch more of these educational videos, please subscribe to this channel so you won't miss another future episode. All of the watch dial in this video are factory original. They are not redial. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. 
if you are looking to buy a professionally serviced vintage Omega, my website link is below this video. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram as well. Hope you guys enjoy this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys on the next episode.